Okay, thank you. So I'm here to talk about pain. So first thing come in mind, you might hear it before, that MND doesn't cause pain. That is just another good example that the pathologically and the reality doesn't match. Because really, the, the different cell, the motor neuron cell die, it doesn't cause pain. But from a survey of 1,000 patients, a quarter of them do report that they do experience some pain. And also, they, they experience more pain the longer they have the MND, as well as the less movement that they've got. So it does, it is very real for them. And what kind of, what type of pain that they most experiencing? Mostly it will be cramps or the treating that you can see in the body. The treating actually, the fasciculation actually is, pain, is painless, but it is an in indication that the muscles are dying. So it leads to cramps and leads to spasm. And it's, the cramps doesn't stay just located in the calf. It could be anywhere, sometimes in the back and sometimes the abdomen. Uh, abdomen. Of course, they have the muscular uh, uh, bone pain. And another pain that is I want to point it out is the DVT, the risk in here in the research actually showing they are actually more than double risk, uh, higher risk in, with DVT than the patients in the inpatient unit. And anyone who knows about DVT, it does cause quite severe pain. And also, if they have something like osteohistory or um, had a fractures from before or had a fall, um, also maybe a car accidents before, those areas, they do feel more pain in those areas than any other uh, that doesn't have a pre-existing problem. But there's one pain that's probably we've, we as a health profession find the most helpless, find the most um, easy to avoid or overlooked by focusing on the practical pain um, or physical pain. That's when I, once I asked the patients, what is the most pain that you experience during the day? He said, being alive. So just a little brief, why they experience pain. Mainly, yes, because of the dying of the muscle, because of the gravity pulling the hands, there is just no support on anywhere that they, when the motor urine has died. And when it's become so weak that they got no control, they, tin, they tilt it aside, they lean, lean forward, they got no, no, no joint, no ligament, then they got doesn't, does, doesn't hold them up anymore. And all those, with you sitting on one spot for over an hour, it's already painful that you can feel your bum. But imagine someone who's sitting there on a, even in a tilted wheelchair with row hole, everything, they are there for very long hours and they feel the pain. Even I saw so many patients come in with the wheelchair, the families well look after, the hands in the right place, and they just slide on the side, caught between the, the board and the raw hole cushion. That itself can cause pain, but until they say it, not many people will be able to see it. And of course, the skin pressure area. It doesn't need to be a actual skin uh, pressure wound or need to be red or any sign. Just like many patients um, complain about the heel pain, pain on the heels, that you give it a rub, it relieves it, but you can't see any sign. But all you could do is to prevent it to happen, you know, teach the family how to avoid it. Before we go to the next slide, there is a, I come across a blog written by MND patients. He was a 34 years old um, architect who um, MND run in a family. That's, he died within uh, 18 months from the diagnosis and he just died on this, and he left behind a child in the same, same age, 18 months old, the son. And he, ex I would like to share with you how he explained his physical pain in his blog. It was five months before he died. By then, he only able to, the only thing left that he could control is his breathing through a CPAP and his speech. So he was able to do his block until the day, <coughs> the day before he died. I wear patches for pain relief, and I take pain relief tablets every day. If I didn't, I would feel all the aches and pains of muscle as they slowly stop working and shrunk joints that become unsupportive. My pelvis started to flatten. 
the ventilator hose wrapping around my head. Occasionally, I've had pain from my hips to my knees, down the sides of my thighs. I felt like the skins had been ripped off my thighs, my feet has been dipped in boiling water, and my fingers have been dipped in ice. His name was Neil Platt from UK. They actually make, put his blog together and make a film called I Am Breathing. It's actually quite worth it to have a look. So what do we do? What is there for us to do? The MND, the motor urine cell keep dying, but it's definitely is a teamwork. There's not one person can change it, not one person can slow it down, but through a team, we can make things a lot better, relieve their pain, whether physically and emotionally. There's a whole list of things we can do, from the OT and the physio, providing the adequate um, uh, equipment, the stay re for the relief pressure in the right time. Uh, also, we need the speech path to be able to keep the communication going so we know how they feel, what they are experiencing. We need the, the, the volunteer to do massages. We need the TENS machine, how to teach them to use it. It really is a, is a whole team. If you're a dietitian to keep the nutrition status so the pressure area doesn't feel as bad. And for the analgesics, actually come in just one of many of the points. Um, yes, we do use uh, pain relief. We use a lot, we follow the, of course, the three letter analgesics letter. And we use a lot of pain um, uh, analgesics for the nerve system, nervous system, as well as anti epileptic. Uh, we do use muscle relaxants group. Um, I remember once patients, we need to have a, even use the extent of midazolam and nivolmepromycin because she was just so stiff and so much in pain. If, you, if I can ask you to take one thing from these um, eight minutes, take these things with this with you, there's always something that we can do, always. Thank you.